up, Reed Temple fam? Get ready. It's time to give higher in God. We've gone higher in praying, loving, serving, and living. Now, it's time to go higher in giving. We have the responsibility to build God's kingdom here on earth. This month, we will focus on the three T's, time, talent, and treasure. Are you giving your time and talent to serve God's people? Are you giving your treasure as God has instructed us in the Bible? If we received report cards from God today, what grade would you receive in the areas of time, talent, and treasure? God is waiting on us. Let's give higher. Read Simple, shout out your mom for Mother's Day. Send your mom a shout out video by uploading a 10 second video to this QR code. All videos must be submitted by May 10th, 2023. We are going higher in Bible study. Join us at 7 p.m. every Wednesday night in May. Do you have little ones between the ages of two and four? Drop them off at our Temple Tots Nursery. Sunday mornings, check-in starts at 9.15 a.m. Read Simple, we are going higher online. Join us live each Sunday for a fresh word and worship every week. Join us for baptism Sunday, May 14th after the 9.30 a.m. service. For more information, visit readsimple.org forward slash engage forward slash baptism. Read Simple in partnership with the Capital Area Food Bank presents drive through Food Distribution at Read Simple Saturday, May 20th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. while supplies last. Distributions take place on the third Saturday of each month. Join us for our active shooter training for leaders, Tuesday, May 9th at 10 a.m. in person, taught by the Prince George's County Police Department. For more information, visit readsimple.org forward slash events. And don't forget to join us as we celebrate our seniors for Senior Sunday, Sunday, May 21st at our 9.30 a.m. service. For more information, visit readsimple.org forward slash events. Join Reed Temple AME Church at 9.30 a.m. every Sunday in the month of May for the 2023 Miracle Month of May Revival fresh fire. On Sunday, May 14th, it's Reverend Dr. Najuma Smith Pollard, Senior Pastor of Word of Encouragement Community Church in Los Angeles, California. When you've been positioned for the here and the now, you do not have the privilege of silence. We do not have the privilege of silence. I don't care if you don't want to talk about it, you still don't have the privilege of silence. On Sunday, May 21st, it's Bishop Reginald T. Jackson, presiding prelate of the 6th Episcopal District of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. God is going to make a way one out of two ways. He's going to make a way somehow, or he's going to make a way anyhow. But somehow the Lord will make a way. Take him at his word. Trust God. And wrapping up the Miracle Month of May on Sunday, May 28th, it's Reverend Dr. Anton Elwood, Senior Pastor of New Mount Zion AME Church in Tallahassee, Florida. It's time for Revival, the Miracle Month of May, Fresh Fire, every Sunday in the month of May, online and in person at Reed Temple's 9.30 a.m. worship services. For more details, please visit reedtemple.org slash events. Reed Temple is located at 11400 Glendale Boulevard in Glendale, Maryland, where Reverend Dr. Mark E. Whitlock, Jr. is senior pastor. Thank you for worshiping with us. Praise the Lord, Reed Temple. I said, praise the Lord, Reed Temple. Come on, let's stand together. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. Any believers in the house know that we walk by faith and we walk not by sight. Hallelujah. Anybody expecting a miracle from our God this morning? 
It's not loud enough in the house of the Lord this morning. Come on, anybody expecting anything? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even through the rain, even through the rain, God is still good. Hey, Amen. We got, a, we got the R3 Youth Choir with us this morning. Can we give these young people a hand? Hey, Amen. Easy song. Y'all come on and join along with us. We got, we got a little two-step too, all right? Come on, Sid. the Lord everybody it is a great day and a wonderful day to worship the Lord our God in spirit and in truth and 
we're worshiping in the miracle month of May, fresh fire all through the month. And we're glad we can start off on this Sunday, our communion Sunday, celebrating our God. And I ask you this morning, what day is today? Today De is the day of our salvation. And what shall we do? Praise God in his sanctuary. Come on, everybody. Let us enter into his courts with praise because the Lord is good and he's worthy to be praised. Amen. And now our call to worship. I was so glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within your gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in thy court is better than, the, than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed, happy, joyful are they that dwell in your house. Lord, we just love your habitation because this is a place where your honor dwells. For the Lord is in this holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. So God, we ask you that you would let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. Together, oh, oh sing unto the, the Lord a new song, song for, for he, he has done marvelous things. things. Make, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Lord. And all, all the, the earth, earth sing praises. praises. I see his hands of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always here. He lives, he lives, where Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along my narrow way. says men and women should always pray and not faint. Let's touch and agree that God is faithful and that he hears our prayers and can answer them. Good morning, God. We thank you for this one great and glorious day that is unfolding before our very eyes. We thank you that you decided to wake us up this morning and then that you decided to release your spirit and your word and worship into our lives. We thank you right now because we know that you have done everything excellently 
and all things are working together for our good, even as we begin the day. I thank you, God, because we know that you who began a good work in us uh, will be faithful to complete it. And God, as we look around this world and we see all the tragedies and we see all the violence and all the hate and all of the things that represent the darkness of the evil one, God, we ask that you move by your spirit. Empower us to be your vessels of honor that speak truth to violence, that, that, that speak hope to despair, that speak life to death, that speak to those forces of darkness and let them know that we are God's property and no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Oh, Father, we ask that you touch each and every person who's tuned in, each and every family that's with them. We ask you to touch those who are coming in later on to hear. We ask that you move by your spirit and let them know that you are God. We pray for our health. We pray for our strength. We pray for our families. We pray for our schools. We pray for our government. We pray for our churches. We pray for the universe that you've called us to be in. And we pray, God, that you can make us the trees of righteousness that we can be able to stand tall and represent the love that you have. Thank you for calling us to Reed Temple and calling us to be a beloved community. And so, God, let the light that we have shine through us and let the love permeate through all that we do because we know that we will be called disciples because we have love one for another. So, God, take control of this day. Take control of the speaker, our pastor, this morning. The choir, the ushers, the stewards, the trustees, and everyone who watches or participates. God, just wrap us in your arms and then empower us to go out and make a difference. Thank you, Lord. We know you hear our prayer. And we touch and agree and say amen and amen and amen. Oh, blessed be the name of our Lord. It's nothing like the prayers. But then we need to hear the word of God. Let's look into the book of Galatians today to see the basis of this message that our prophet is going to share with us. In the book of Galatians, the sixth chapter, verses 7 through 9, out of the King James Version. Read with me as I read aloud. And it is written, uh, be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man or a woman sows, that shall he also reap. For whoever sows to the flesh, shall of the flesh reap corruption. And whoever sows to the Spirit, shall the Spirit reap everlasting life. But my brothers, my sisters, let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. The word of God for the people of God. Glory to your name, God. Let the people of God say amen and amen. We will move further in worship in song.
Good morning, good morning to everybody online. We're just so thankful that you tune in, that you uh, that you dialed us up, that you're here every Sunday, this first Sunday in particular. And we want to know, we want you to know how much we love and respect your love for God and Jesus Christ. We got a couple announcements. We would love for you, amen, as this service comes to an end. Terry, uh, find your way coming down to the church this morning at 9.30 because Bishop John Richard Bryant is preaching for us at 9.30. So come on down. Amen. Uh, hang up your phone. Uh, close your laptop. And come on down at 9.30 this morning. I'm excited. Why? Because God is doing an incredible thing uh, as we listen to uh, Bishop John Richard Bryan, who will be preaching at 9.30 this morning. Number two, we want you to come to Bible study on Wednesday. We're inviting you to invite all your children, uh, 12 and above. Why? Because we're going to teach them about the principles of wealth. We're going to teach them how to accumulate wealth. We're going to teach them how to create savings account, but not only that, we're going to promise to give them $25. We're giving $25 for a savings account, but you got to be here to receive it. That's Wednesday at at 7 p.m. We promise you're going to get you out by 8.15. We promise you'll get home in time so they'll be ready for school the next day. But Wednesday, we're going to have Lanta Evans who's going to talk about not only savings for children, but the principles of saving and investment for children. So it's important that you come uh, on Wednesday this week as we learn about going higher and giving higher in God. Amen, amen, amen. It is now time for our offering. It's now time for our offering. We want you to know that you're doing such a wonderful God job in obedience to God. One of the one of the visions, one of the prophecies uh, that we offer in this ministry is that we're going to pay off this building. We're going to pay off all debt in two years. That's right. And, and we want to pay it off because as we pay it off, we won't have to spend another dollar on a loan. We won't have to spend another dollar, hallelujah, with banks. No, we want to be able to give those resources back into the community where we live, worship, and work. Amen. It's important that we are obedient to the God, to God in our tithe. The Bible says, I'll rebuke the devourer for thy sake. I will open up a window so wide that you won't be able to receive all the blessings I have in store. I know I'm talking to somebody here today because you're, you're, you're watching a laptop, amen, that's paid for. You're looking at a phone that's paid for. You're in a beautiful home, amen, that's being paid for or already paid for. God has blessed you enormously. God has given you so much, so much wealth, so much blessing that you couldn't have built a house. You 
couldn't have built a car. You couldn't have made the clothes, but God provided them for you. Will you dare rob God? I want you right now. Just to text Reed Temple to 45777. Text Reed Temple to 45777. Let me pray for you, for your offering. Dear God, thank you for their obedience. Thank you for them giving above the tithe. Whether it's $2.50 or $25 or $250 above their tithe goes, amen, to wipe out the dead and to fulfill the text that says, oh, no man, nothing but the love of God. So bless them, keep them, hold them. And I, I will be reminded that we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise now and forevermore. And the church says, amen, amen. Now that you're here, we want you to prepare for your communion. Amen. I, just right now, just go and uh, get your uh, wafer. Go get your uh, uh, juice. Amen. For those of you who came on uh, Saturday, we thank the stewardesses, amen, uh, for what they did uh, by passing out the communion tray. But right now, we ask that you prepare for this sacred moment uh, uh, as a participant in holy communion just just take time go run to the kitchen or, uh, or wherever you keep your communion tray uh, as we prepare uh, to be led by reverend Debaya in this communion service it's important that you participate just go get a piece of bread go go get a piece a, a little drip of juice amen so that we may do this communion service reverend Debaya, please lead us now in the general confession Praise God. This is a very special occasion in the lives of Christendom. One of the things that Jesus did before he rendered himself, submitted himself to the world and went to be with God was to have the Last Supper. And as we take communion each month, the first Sunday, we remember his sacrifice. Our communion is open to everyone. So as you have listened to the pastor and have received your elements, let's begin with our general confession. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, God, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The very remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. You who is the most merciful Father, have mercy on us for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we say amen. And pastor will come and consecrate the, the elements for us. Let us consecrate the elements. Almighty God, my heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy did give your only son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself, once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until it's coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father. We most humbly beseech you, and grant that we, receiving your creatures of bread and wine according to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution in remembrance of his death and passion, 
may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed by Judas, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of our sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Likewise, we do the same. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. Please take your wafer, take your bread, which is symbolic of the body of Christ. Let me lift it up in prayer. Dear God, I pray for the victims of mass shootings, families that are trembling in fear and the echo of gunfire haunts them loss of their family and friends plagues them may this epidemic of gun violence come to an end help us God to unwrap the gift of life because you came to give us life and life more abundantly in Jesus name Church, say amen. This is my body broken for you. Take, eat. Likewise, after supper, he took the dessert wine. And he prayed, dear God, for my stewards and trustees, for ministerial leaders, for family and friends, for Reverend Dubaye on my left side. Everybody in the sanctuary, for those online, bless them, keep them, hold them, prosper them. In Jesus' name, amen. This is my blood shed on Calvary's cross. Take drink for the remission of sin. Reverend Dubai now will lead us in the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray this prayer that Jesus taught the disciples to pray. And I pray that we pray it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And please forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And God, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Let the people of God say amen. Amen and amen.
singers wasn't it wonderful that we are led it's even more wonderful that you should know that uh, for the entire month of may and moving forward you will not get a, a sermon that's uh, from the previous week you will get a, a brand new sermon every week so that's important that you should know that uh, amen uh, it's important that we have a rhema word a fresh word uh, so that you may uh, experience the, the wonders of god let us pray dear god May the words of mouth, meditation of heart, find acceptance. For you alone serve as our rock and our redeemer. Come now, preach through me so they may hear a word from the Lord. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. Uh, this month we are preaching uh, from the topic, Giving Higher to God. It's a series that we will identify with, with our Bible studies and our preaching, giving higher in God. I want you to turn with me now, and if you're at home, uh, please stand. Uh, uh, no 
matter where you are, just stand in reverence to the Word of God. Let's take a look at the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 7. It says, Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man or woman sows, that he or she will also reap. For he or she who sows to their own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But they who sows to the Spirit from the Spirit reap eternal life. Let us not be weary in doing good, for we will reap in due season if we don't give up. I, I just want you to say it if we faint not. I, I just want you, whatever way you want to say it, don't give up. Don't give up. As a matter of fact, let me put a tag on this text. I'm not giving up. I'm not. Just write it in the text. Write it on the text. Write it, write, write it in the chat. I'm not giving up. Truth be told, within every body of believers, there's always a moment, Reverend Debaye, in time where the mission or the task or the ministry seems too hard, too difficult, too overwhelming, too much. I know for me that has been the case. Without a doubt or question, many a person has made the painful and pathetic penalty of giving up just before God opens a window to bless us. But just before we experience the thrill of victory. But instead of giving it one more time, instead of giving it one more shot, give up. Am I talking to you this morning? Yeah, you, you gave up on finishing college. 40% of people give up on finishing college. Another 30% high school. You give up on starting a business. You had an idea. You even took care of the business plan, but you didn't start. You gave up. You, you gave up on your marriage. You, you gave the vows at the altar, but you gave up on your marriage. You even gave up on your church. All oh, the pastor changed. That's a good excuse. So I gave up on my church. You gave up on your dreams and your vision. God spoke to you, gave you a revelation, but you gave up. Am I preaching to you this morning? Type it in the text. We can come with a long list of excuses and uh, to why we gave up and to what happened. And, and, and many of these excuses point the finger of blame and the accusations of others at others. But we never want to look at our own mess. We never want to look at ourselves. We never want to be, hallelujah, the person in the mirror who gave up. Somebody made you. You came up with some good excuses. Somebody made fun of you. So you you gave up and quit. Somebody, nobody encouraged you to keep going, so you gave up in excuse. Nobody, hallelujah, felt good about you, so you gave up and hallelujah, quit. Nobody helped you. Nobody, hallelujah, encouraged you. You did not, nobody would listen to you, so you gave up and quit. But I got news for maybe three of y'all this morning, but whatever you do, whatever you must do, there's one person, there's one one entity, there's one deity. Don't you give up on God. Write it in the chat. I'm not giving up on God. See, the content in the context of the text finds Paul teaching us not to give up. Paul establishes the church in Galatia, but received word that certain Jewish Christians known as Judaizers uh, were trying to persuade these new Galatian Christians uh, to give up on everything that God had revealed to Paul. And now they wanted to go back to where they were before. Uh, they went back to practicing Jewish laws and rituals, including circumcision and eating kosher food. They gave up. They gave up on the doctrine of justification by faith alone. They gave up on what 
Jesus says, I've come to do a new thing. They, they, gave up, they gave up on believing it is the grace of God that delivers you made manifest by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. They gave up on it because somebody got into their mind. Somebody got into their ear. And now they gave up. He told them not to give up, but to walk by spirit and not to provoke or envy anyone, but help one another to grow by faith. Here's my relevant question for you to ponder this morning as you witness this worship service online. Do you hold on to, the, to having faith in God? <laughs> Do you hold on when times are going difficult, rough, and the terrain seems terrorist to you? Do you hold on and not give up on God? Hallelujah. Here's my first point of three. I want you to write it in the chat. I'm not giving up on God. Yeah, just write it in. I'm not giving up on God. You see, the Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Uh, whatever man or woman sows, that he will also reap. I want to make sure you understand because sometimes we get the two confused, Reverend DeBaye. There's a difference in giving up and failure. You see, failure is putting a full effort into achieving a goal or a task, and you just simply miss the mark. Come short of glory. Oh, but giving up is when you've made an individual choice to step away, to quit, stop, throw in the tile. Amen. That means you came to that conclusion all by yourself. Hallelujah. Paul knew that the Galatian Christians were not failing in God because there's no failure in God, but they had given up on God. The Galatian Christians were giving up because they were being misled by these Judaizers, these wrong folk, these, these, these Jewish Christians. In a word of Malcolm X, the Galatian Christians had been hoodwinked, bamboozled, led astray, run amok, and flat out deceived. Y'all got to hear what I'm talking about. Anytime you believe someone who does not know the doctrine, hallelujah, then you're mocking God. Anytime you decide not to follow and live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God you're mocking God and you've given up on God in essence they had given up on God hallelujah we give up on God when we believe that we, we can live apart from God's laws we give up on God when we believe we can act any way we want to act say anything we want to say do any way thing we want to do oh God's going to forgive us no baby God understands that you didn't believe in the law so therefore now you're trying to look for the law to forgive give you of your sin. We give up on God when we secretly sin, ridicule the righteous, and claim that there is no God. When we're in the booth in the back, hallelujah, trying to get our swerve on. That's why the Bible says in Luke chapter 9, verse 62, and Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. I just want to make sure I stop by and tell somebody don't give up on God by looking back somebody shout back at me don't you look back because I can talk about Lot's wife Lot's wife gave up on God by looking back in Genesis 19 at Sodom and Gomorrah when she looked back she became a pillar of salt don't you give up on God Jacob thought about giving up on God when an angel wrestled with him all night long Jonah thought about giving up on God when a whale swallowed him whole because he didn't want to preach to the Ninevites. Elijah thought about giving up on God when he went into a small cave. Hallelujah. And a voice spoke to him. Thomas thought about giving up on God, but Jesus met him in the upper room and said, why don't you touch my side and my hands? Peter thought about giving up on God. That is until Jesus had a fish fry on a seashore after they caught no fish all night long. Jeremiah 
had thought about giving up on God. But I got to say this, Reverend Debayesh. But when he thought about all that God had done for him, there's a difference between giving up and failure. Here it is. There is no failure in God. That's what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. For, for a just man falleth seven times and rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Y'all got to understand because the wicked is given up, but the righteous man, hallelujah, did not fail. We may fail sometimes, but as long as you get back up and get back in the race, you may last sometimes, but as long as you get back up and start telling the truth. I may not preach well every week, but as long as I get back up and preach the mighty word of God, somebody shout back at me, I'm not giving up on God because God has never given up on me. Somebody shout back at a preacher. Here's my first, my second point of three. Write it in the chat. I'm not giving up on the Spirit. I can say it in another word. I'm not giving up on the Holy Spirit. Somebody holler back at me. I'm not giving up on the Holy Spirit. You see, that's what the Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 8. For he who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But he or she who sows to the spirit, somebody say spirit, will from the spirit reap eternal life. That's why you can't give up on the spirit. In the last chapter, Paul contrasts the works of the flesh and the fruits of the spirit. He uses the same flesh spirit duality in this verse. Uh, Sox, which is the Greek word for flesh that depicts a focus on the body indulgence rather than ungodly service. It was Plato and Aristotle that wanted to condemn the flesh because we know that unless you, hallelujah, discipline the flesh, the flesh will demand that you do what the flesh tells you to do. Somebody knows what I'm talking about because the work of the flesh reaps, reap sexual immorality, idolatry, sorcery, jealousy, drunkenness, and all things times of evil things as much as you don't want to do I do what I don't want to do because my flesh compels me to do it that's what Paul says as much as I don't want to go to the club I'm forced to go to the club because my flesh calls me into the club as much as I don't want to go to that pornographic site my flesh compels me to go to that pornographic site that's why Paul says you reap what you sow if you reap the flesh, you will give birth to your morality. But if you reap hallelujah, but if you sow to your spirit, you will reap eternal life. The works of the spirit reap love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. That's because you planted the seeds of the spirit. I'm reminded of the law of the harvest, Reverend Abayah, because the law of the harvest says you will reap that which you sow. It just happened just a few weeks ago that I decided to start planting in my backyard. And when I started planting seeds, I started seeing the seeds grow into the plants that I planted. Hallelujah. And that's why the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7 verse 16, do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Y'all know the answer. It is no. Thistles may produce some attractive flowers but thistles are known for their thorns and I stop by to talk to somebody here because the law of the harvest says you're still getting pricked by them thorns you thought you were sowing good seed but you're getting pricked you're getting pinched you're getting thrown apart because if you sow hate then expect to reap hate if you sow fear of failure then you will reap fear you will reap failure if you sow sexual immorality Morality, then you will reap immoral behavior. If you sow gossip, then you will reap somebody gossiping about you. If you sow dissent, don't you understand that you'll reap destruction?
destruction in the church. If you sow hallelujah arrogance, then you will reap no friends that will trust anything that you do. If you reap no Bible study, then you will hallelujah have a harvest of no word that can fight for you when the devil comes after you. Whatever you do, don't give up on the spirit. I want you to write it in the text. Don't give up on the spirit. Make it personal. I'm not going to give up on the spirit. Come in Zechariah 4, 6 because the Bible says this is God's message to Zerubbabel. Not by might nor by power but by my spirit says the Lord Almighty. You will succeed because of my spirit. I'm not giving up on the spirit. The Bible the Bible says in Galatians 5, 22 but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, hallelujah, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. I'm not giving up on the spirit because the Bible tells me in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. I want to know if there's anybody in the house that wants to receive the power to serve like Jesus, power to preach like Peter, power to pray like Paul, power to give like Mary, power to get a new job, power to restore your marriage, power to raise your children, power to prosper, power to live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Don't you give up on the spirit because the spirit is your source of power. Oh my God. Here's my last point. Here's my last point. Here's my last point. Because I've talked about one, I'm not giving up on God. My second power, my second point was, I'm not giving up on the Spirit. Here's my last point. I'm certainly not giving up on Jesus. Oh my God. Somebody say, I'm not giving up on Jesus. That's why Paul writes, he said, let us not be weary in doing good, for we will reap in due season if you do not give up. Somebody write in the chat, I'm not giving up on Jesus. Y'all got to hear me as I close. Paul promises that if we do good works, because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Jesus says you will do greater things that I have ever done we will reap in due season if you don't give up we must remember that God's timetable for rewards might not be as prompt as we would like my grandmama used to say he may not come when you want him but he'll come right on time I remember my saints of the church would say Reverend you didn't stay at the altar long enough because in all of your yearning hallelujah don't you you lose your burning uh, to pray for the Lord. Uh, you need some knee pads on uh, because you need to stay at that altar uh, because the rewards of the faithful servant uh, might come slowly uh, but they will come certainly. Oh my God, I feel my hope coming uh, but Paul adds, uh, you don't give up. Uh, whatever you do, don't give up on Jesus. Listen to me if you please. Uh, don't give up uh, because you've come too far from down this road uh, to give up now. Uh, You've won too many battles to give up now. You overcame a heart attack to give up now. Seen too many glorious results to give up now. I got to go back to my word because the three Hebrew boys didn't give up although that meant hallelujah hanging out in the fiery furnace. Daniel didn't give up although it meant having a seat in the lion's den. Noah didn't give up although it meant long years of labor on an ark when there was no sign of rain. Esther did not give up although it meant lying her life on the line. Abraham didn't give up although it meant taking a trip up Mount Moriah with his only son Isaac. John didn't give up although it meant isolation on the Isle of Patmos. The apostle Paul didn't give up although it meant hassling and wrestling with Nero's chopping block. But I got one 
more thing to say. I can't give up on Jesus because he's the author and the finisher of my faith. I can't give up on Jesus because he gave me my life and my life more abundantly. I can't give up on Jesus because he did everything for me. When he encountered the temptation in the wilderness, he didn't give up. When he heard the scorn and the blasphemy of the Pharisees, he didn't get up. Was ignored and misunderstood by the apostles and the disciples. He didn't give up. He faced the very demons of hell in the Garden of Gethsemane. He didn't give up. Prayed until the sweat, great blood drops from his hands. He didn't give up. Struggled up the hill that is called Mount Calvary. That is called Calvary. He didn't give up. He was nailed to an old rugged cross. He was beaten. He was bruised for our iniquity and the chastisement of the world was upon him but he didn't get up who is listening who has ears because if you got ears let him hear God is so glad that you didn't give up you did not give in you did not give up somebody shout back at me God I'm talking to you God was able to bless your family because you didn't give up God was able to bless your life because he didn't give up God bless your husband with a new job because you didn't give up. God bless you with children when the doctor said none is coming because you didn't give up. God gave you your health when the hospital said no. I want to talk to somebody in this house. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. I've had some sleepless nights. But... But when I think and look around and I think things over and I think things over, all of my good days outweigh my bad days and I won't complain. The Lord, the Lord. The Lord has been good to me. He's been good to me more than the world would ever know. Hallelujah. He dried all my tears away, turned my midnights into day. And all I can do is say thank you for what you did for me. Thank you for how you lifted me. Thank you. I can't give up. I can't give in. I can't give out. Put your hands together. Stand up out of your bed. Get up out of your seat and say thank you. I can't give up. I can't give up. I can't give up. Can you say it with me? I know you're at home. Somebody's listening. God is listening. Can you say I can't give up? I can't give up. Tell yourself I can't give up. I can't give up. Give up on God. I can't get up on the Spirit. I can't give up on Jesus. Oh my God, what a message, what a message. But you know what? As much as many of us can say that, there are quite a few of us who just gave up last night, who almost didn't make it this morning because you had given up. And there are some who are listening who are thinking about it. But I pray in the name of Jesus that you felt the Holy Spirit saying, don't give up. The darkest hour is just before dawn. In fact, the new day starts at midnight in the darkness. Don't give up. And if you feel God moving in your heart right now, telling you, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. It's not over yet. It's not over until God says it's over that we want you to know that we are here for you to help you make the connection to the one that will keep you holding on. And that's Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And if you're out there this morning listening to us and you don't have a church home, you don't have a connection with anybody that can pray with you, or you lost faith in God because God didn't do what you wanted him to do when he did it, if you're out there in tears, I see you crying right now. We want you to make a decision this morning. Number one, to give your life to Christ. You are valuable. You are precious. You are wonderful. And you are just beginning to tap in.
to all that God has given you. And we want you to make that decision. And yes, we want to be able to make sure that you're not making it by yourself and that we're with you. And you can do that online with us. Just hit the button that says, I want to give my life to Christ. I want to give my problems to Christ, my challenges. I want to give them to Christ. And now maybe you are a member of a church a long time ago, but now you got discouraged and you don't go anyway. You watch online. Yes, that's good. But you should not forsake the assembly of the people of God. And we want you to know that here at Reed Temple, we love you. We're the beloved community. And we'd love to have you come and join us. We're not perfect because there are moments when we want to give up. But we have each other to help each other out. And then maybe you need prayer. Maybe you need prayer. All you need to do is click on the link and fill out the form. And we will get back to you. We want you to know that God cares. Now, just in case you click that button, I want to pray this prayer with you as you pray with me. And this is going to be the first step with your giving your life to Christ. Are you with me? Go ahead, wipe that tear out your eye. It's going to be all right. Pray with me. Dear God, we come right now in the name of Jesus. Early on a May Sunday morning. And God, I realized that I was about to give up. That I didn't think there was anything else that could help me. But God, I failed. I've sinned. And, and sometimes I'm just ashamed to even come to you. But God, I know that you love me. And I know that you care for me. And I know that you died for me. And that you rose for me. And I believe that you can help me to hold on a little while longer. So God, I give my heart to you. I give my struggles to you. I give my pain to you. And I ask you to come into my heart. And be that spirit that leads me when I need to move. I want you to know that I trust you. And I want to be saved. Thank you, God, for hearing my prayer. I believe that things have already started changing right now because you're with me. In Jesus' name, say amen. Oh, praise God. And you, I know you joined us. We're going to call you and let you know that we're glad you're here. And if you need prayer, just click the button. And we're here. But whatever happens, don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. Amen. Let's give God the praise right now. Pastor, you preach this morning. <laughs> Amen. It's offering time for those of you who tuned in maybe a little late. Uh, we ask that you would uh, uh, give your offering to by simply uh, texting for Reed Temple to 4577, texting Reed Temple to 4577. For those of you who haven't made your above the line, above the tithe pledge, you go online and just above uh, forward slash and make your pledge. Uh, we want to extinguish, we want to wipe out, we want to eliminate every debt at Reed Temple in the next two years. We're going to raise $9 million and we're going to do that. And in doing so, we will wipe out every piece of debt uh, and we want to make sure that you're a part of that. We want to make sure you're a part of that movement. Dear God, bless their offering. Bless them who are texting right now. Bless them who are writing envelopes right now. Bless them who are writing checks. Bless them in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. Well, it's now time for us to go home. We thank you. Remember, I want you to come to the 930 service today. Come to the 930 service. Bishop John Richard Bryan is preaching. I'm excited. I'm excited because he's the man that ordained me, and I hope you get just as excited about him because he's a magnificent preacher. You may have had a good time this morning, but come and get your second dose of the Holy Ghost. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen. Now God bless them.
Keep them, hold them. Remind them not to ever give up on you because you've never given up on them. May the Spirit of the Lord rest, rule, and abide in each and every one of them now and forevermore. And the church says amen, 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 and amen.